Hey, what's up, everybody? It's Coach Matt, EliteThrowsCoaching.com, and today I'm coming to you from my kitchen, believe it or not, to talk to you about the discus. The biggest mistake that I see athletes make when it comes to throwing discus is actually choosing the correct discus that they should be using, all right? So when you open up a track and field catalog or when you go to a website and you go to buy a discus, you're going to see that the discus are either rated according to their rim weight percentage or there's an actual distance rating like a meter rating that is associated with each discus. I want to explain to you real quick what that means and how that's going to affect the type of discus that you should be throwing to get maximum results. So real quick, let's talk about rim weight. Rim weight is the actual percentage of the overall weight of the discus that is the rim. So if you're throwing a two kilogram men's discus, that's a 50% rim weight. That means that 50% of that two kilogram is the rim. So it has a rim that weighs one kilogram and everything else that makes up that discus weighs another one kilogram. So it's kind of evenly balanced and that's more of a beginner rim weight, that 50% rim weight um, is going to be more beginner, more balanced, more forgiving of a discus for a brand new beginner thrower. At the same time, if you have that two kilogram discus and that two kilogram discus has a 75% rim weight, 75% of the total weight of that discus is the rim. So 1.5 kilograms is the rim and 0.5 kilograms is everything else. The plates and the bolts and everything that makes that discus go together and hold together is half of a kilogram. So a something that's not center weighted, that's not evenly balanced, that might be 75% rim weight or higher, is going to be a lot less forgiving of a discus. But if you throw it really well, you have a great release, you have a great release angle, you put a lot of spin on that discus when you let it go, it's going to actually fly, it has the potential to fly even further than that center weighted disc does. Now what I've got here on the table are discuses that are made by Nelco. We sell these on my website, EliteThrowsCoaching.com, and these aren't sold by the actual rim weight. These have a meter rating. So you've got the Challenger discus, which is 47 meters. It's about 155 feet. You've got something like the Super Spin, which is a stainless steel rim. You can see it's a little dirty. I haven't cleaned it in a while. This is a 70 meter. You've got the Gold, which is 75 meter. You've got this really big 78 meter. Look at the size of the rim on this thing. 78 meter. And then my favorite for most everybody is the Low Spin. The Low Spin is a 65 meter discus. And I think that's great for, for most anybody out there who throws. But you can see they go from this beginner level, this Challenger discus, which is a little bit of a lower meter rating, all the way up to 78 meters for the big one. Now, to give you the English, I wanted to put this in feet as well. I actually have it written down here on the table. Um, the Challenger, 47 meters, that's 155 feet. The low spin, 65 meters, that's 213 feet. The stainless steel super spin is a 70 meter discus, which is 230 feet. The gold Nelco is a 75 meter, which is 246 feet. And the 78 meter ultra spin, the black one that has the really big rim, that is 78 meters, 256 feet. Now, what does this stuff all mean in the grand scheme of things? Let me explain. All right, so whether you buy your discuses according to the meter rating or you buy your discuses according to rim weight, what this all really means is that the heavier the rim, the more potential it has to go farther, to fly farther. It also has to deal with something that coaches call forgiveness. Now, another sport that, believe it or not, is kind of similar to throwing discus is golf. With golf, you have a lot of different levels of golf clubs. You, golf clubs. You have your beginner level for your beginner golfers, the intermediate level for your intermediate golfers, and you've got your advanced level clubs that the guys like on the, you know, on the PGA Tour use, like the real high-end, super stiff golf clubs. What this means is that if you are a beginner, you don't want to use that really high-end golf club because you have to hit that ball perfectly every single time to see a difference. 
If you're a beginner golfer, you want to use a beginner set of golf clubs because they're a lot more forgiving. If you don't hit it perfect every time, which as a beginner, you probably won't. If you don't hit it perfect every time, it's not going to be as harsh of a hit. It's not going to be as harsh of a swing. Um, it's still probably going to go kind of straight, maybe not as far, but it's going to go kind of straight. That's the way you have to look at a discus when you go to buy it. If you're a beginner, you want to get a beginner discus, something that's going to be a little bit more forgiving, something that's going to be a little bit more center weighted, a little bit more balanced and have a little bit lower of a meter rating. Because you're not going to throw that discus perfectly every single time. If you take 10 throws as a beginner, you might release this thing off your finger perfectly two or three times out of 10. The other, you know, seven, eight times that you release it, it's not going to be perfect. So you don't want to use something with a really heavy rim weight. Now, as you get better, say you're a, uh, you know, high school freshman and you just started throwing. Maybe when you're a sophomore or a junior, you bump up to something like the low spin, which is a 65 meter discus. Maybe if you're throwing, say, in that 150, 160 foot range, then you go and you test out some of the other ones like the super spin or the Nelco Gold, which is going to have a little bit heavier of a rim, a little bit longer of a distance rating. And even though you might not throw it perfect, say you throw it perfectly 7 out of 10 times. At least you know when you go to a meet and you have three throws and then another three throws and finals, you're going to have maybe four or five of those throws that come off your hand really nice. And having that higher rim weight discus, that higher meter rating discus, it's actually going to help you out. Okay, so hopefully this goes into explaining how to figure out and buy the right discus for you. Essentially, if you're a brand new beginner thrower, center weighted lower rim weight, lower meter rating discus is going to be great for you. If you're an intermediate thrower, something that's a little bit heavier of a, of a rim weight is going to be great for you. And if you are a really advanced thrower, we're talking somebody, you know, a, a high school boy throwing over 170 feet. We're talking a collegiate male throwing over 170 feet. We're talking a high school female throwing over 140, 150 feet. Getting something like a high rim weight, higher meter rating discus is going to help you out as long as you can throw that discus with a lot of spin, with a great release, and at the proper release angle every single time. So hopefully this goes to explain a little bit more about how to choose the right discus for you. That's the biggest mistake that I see with beginner throwers. And in future weeks, we're going to talk more about other mistakes that are happening in the circle. But this was the big one that we needed to cover right away. All right, everybody, thank you so much for checking out the video. Make sure to go to EliteThrowsCoaching.com. This is where you're going to find all the information about our upcoming overnight camp, all of our online products that we sell, like our eBooks and our video analysis and our online coaching. It's where you're going to read the blog post that goes along with this video as well. So make sure to check it out, EliteThrowsCoaching.com.